New developments in the so-called Gilgo Beach serial murders. Police in Suffolk County are re-interviewing two women after discovering that serial killer suspect Rex Howerman propositioned them several years ago. Comes as we're learning more about him and his life behind bars. The Suffolk County Jail has taken extra precautions to ha house him, including installing more cameras near his cell. They say they have him under 24-7 monitoring. Extra personnel also have been assigned to him because of the 646, a six foot six, I'm sorry, and roughly 275 pound suspect size and the charges he is accused of. They include killing Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello, stuffing their bodies into burlap sacks. He's also the main suspect in a fourth murder, Maureen Brainerd Barnes. Jean Casares is out front. As the investigation into the Gilgo Beach serial killing suspect continues, more people coming forward to talk about their interactions with Rex Hewerman. I had a really, really bad feeling. Like, my gut was, like, telling me I needed to get away from him. Nikki Brass telling Good Morning America Hewerman solicited her online in 2015 when she worked as an escort and that he talked about the Gilgo Beach murders. When he talked about it, he would, like, speak in a they and hypothetical, but... He had this, like, smile on his face that made me really uneasy. And, like, he had this, like, glossed over look in his eye. The investigation now spans the country. Authorities in South Carolina searching property owned by Hewerman for any evidence to link the 59-year-old architect to the murder of three young women in New York in 2009 and 2010. Sources tell CNN a Chevy Avalanche was seized from the property and is being combed for evidence. There were SWAT team, the FBI, there was all kind of stuff. Those living next to the property were stunned. We have a joining property to a serial killer, which is like, eh, you know, that's like, I never put that on my bucket list. And over 2,000 miles away in Las Vegas, law enforcement officials tell CNN they are looking at cold case homicides to see if there could be any links. According to property records obtained by CNN, Hewerman and his wife purchased two timeshare condos in Las Vegas in 2003 and 2005. On Long Island, where Hewerman lived, crime scene investigators continue to collect and process potential evidence from inside his home and his nearby storage unit. Also searching for possible connections to remains of eight other people found along that beach. Does it tie into any other victims, any other victims that we may not even know where the bodies are? You know, people who, uh, who may have been reported missing. Hewerman remains in jail on routine COVID restriction protocols and suicide watch. Law enforcement tells CNN he isn't talking and has had no visitors. And Rex Hewerman has pleaded not guilty. His attorney saying that this is a circumstantial case and it is weak. I spoke with an attorney this afternoon, John Ray, and he is working with representing two other families of other victims that were found in the vicinity. They're not part of the charges now against Hewelman, but he says these families are on edge. They are just waiting and wanting to know what the truth is here. And he says it's justice for the victims, but it's mercy for these families that have had to linger for so long, not knowing what the truth was. Right, and of course we'll see, uh, you know, they're saying in three cases could of course be Many, many more, yes. as you point out. Jean, thank you very much. And joining me now, the Suffolk County District Attorney, Ray Tierney. Uh, and District Attorney, I appreciate your time. Um, you know, people are coming forward, two escorts among them who interacted with Rex uh, Hewerman. They did not go home with him. Uh, are any of these new tips leading you to more victims, to more leads in this case? Thanks for having me, Aaron. Uh, I think that. Uh, you know, we, this investigation has has um, entered into a new phase. Uh, previously, we had been doing a grand jury investigation, which is which was secret, which we were deliberately trying to obscure from the target. Uh, now that we've arrested him and and uh, executed these search warrants, it's a new phase and and it's an overt phase. So we've ex executed the search warrants. We're going to have to go through that evidence, but we're also going to have to uh, interview a great number of people, which we'll be doing over the course of the next couple of days. So, uh, and you're gonna do that over the next couple of days. So moving quickly uh, on that front. Um, Absolutely. Okay, so I know you, you said at the arraignment from what you knew then that he had quote, a lot of torture porn, depictions of women being abused, raped, even killed in his possession. 
What can you tell me, District Attorney, about some of the other evidence that you found? So, you know, we, we've we um, executed, as your uh, report indicates, a, a great number of search warrants over a great many different places. And we're, we're looking for everything from, you know, large items to, um, you know, um, um, molecular items like blood, DNA, trace evidence, hair. So what's happening is our, um, our criminal criminologists from the Suffolk County Crime Lab are going through each of these areas, uh, literally inch by inch by inch, uh, to try to obtain as much evidence as possible. Uh, this is a painstaking process. It is a long uh, process, and we're going to let that process play, play out. We're going to inventory all that evidence. We're going to analyze it, and then we'll be able to talk about it. So um, are you able to share any more about what was found in his actual home? I mean, you know, people are now understanding, right, in the Carolinas, there were multiple places uh, searched. But uh, in the vault in his home, we know that there were, were guns. There were reports out today that dis suggest uh, other evidence found in his home, maybe a, a handcuff keys or stained T-shirt. I mean, things that could obviously lead people's minds in, in obvious and horrific directions. Uh, can you confirm any of that? Well, you know, when we uh, executed the search warrant, and one of the reasons why we didn't want to arrest the defendant at his home is because we knew he had um, permits for 92 handguns. So we knew he had access to uh, a large number of guns. We executed the search warrant. Uh, certainly that has been borne out. So we're going to inventory those guns and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll provide the information once it's concluded. Uh, but again, you know, once you get uh, some, uh, you get an item of evidence, you're going to swab it. Uh, see if you can get blood, uh, saliva, yeah. hair, uh, DNA. Uh, all of these things, it takes time. So, um, you know, as as a as a as an investigator and as a as a prosecutor, you don't uh, you don't uh, let out information piecemeal. Uh, yes. You uh, conclude your investigation and then you you provide your findings in court, like we did at the arraignment. So, so can I just ask a question, just in terms of when you got a, you started this, you were doing the grand jury, you didn't want him to know. Were you sort of observing him during that time, watching how he behaved? Did you see anything or was it, or did it shock you with its apparent normalcy given what uh, you believe you have proof he did? Uh, no, no, nothing really uh, doing this, nothing really shocks you. I think uh, it was pretty clear. Uh, we did surveil him. We did physical surveillance and, and otherwise surveilled him. And, uh, you know, from our observations and our investigation, it was pretty clear uh, that this defendant was living a double life, um, you know, a, a part of his life that he presented to the public and a, a part of his life that that uh, he very much kept hidden. And one final question, oh, yeah. District Attorney, do you believe that there will be, you will be able to link him to multiple more uh, of these killings, right, of these of these women, and I know, of course, at least one man, but whose bodies were found all in that area of Gilgo Beach? So I, I came in office in January of 2022. Yep. Um, we started the task force in February of 2022. Uh, Rex Yerman was identified as a target from Mar uh, on March 14th, six weeks later. And we've been off and running ever since then. We're continuing to accumulate evidence through the grand jury with regard to the four women who were known as the Gilgo Four. Uh, we've uh, we've charged three of those murders. Uh, we're going to continue to work those murders. We're going to continue to evaluate all the evidence in this case. And then beyond that, we're going to expand our investigation into the other bodies on Gilgo Beach. It doesn't matter what I think. It matters what I can prove. And after we're done with this exhaustive um, investigation, I'll have uh, you know more information for everyone. All right. Well, District Attorney, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aaron.